cargo is over shall wear the victor's crown in the new uganda people power our power nup everywhere kunga uganda kunga kunga europe kunga kunga amsterdam kunga kunga thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen please use your music thank you thank you very much well i'll hold the microphone for myself uh, madam deputy president honorable members of parliament the honorable Mwada, who is my immediate successor in the beloved chad on the east constituency the honorable oh, yeah. The Honorable Nyeko Derek, uh, the Honorable Nyanzi Fred, who we love to call Chairman Nyanzi, our Chief Mobilizer, the Governor of Kayunga District, <laughs> Madam Nakwede, uh, Comrade Nubian Lee, Comrade Alex Wise Amufumbiro, the team that came from Uganda, Comrade Susan, and your beloved husband. <laughs> Fellow leaders from various chapters, leaders from America, leaders from other countries of Europe, Germany, Switzerland, the UK, comrades from the USA, ladies and gentlemen, I salute you today. Allow me, brothers and sisters, to, in a very, very special way, welcome you to this conference. And thank you very, very much for dedicating this time, especially those of you that have traveled from different parts of the world. I thank you very much for giving in this great personal sacrifice. I know you came here at a cost. Comrades, this is nothing to be taken for granted. This speaks so much of your commitment to free our country, Uganda. I want to request all of us in a very, very short time to stand up and observe a moment of silence for our comrades that were murdered by General Museveni and his fellow killers. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. And yes, we also continue to send our hearts and prayers to the comrades that are still enduring prison, those that are enduring torture as we speak, and those that are in hospitals. We continue to tell them, hang in their comrades. Freedom will soon come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to you you who are present here today and those watching and listening to us online i'm addressing you as the duly elected president of the republic of uganda yes we won the national unity platform won the 2021 elections although of course as the world knows general seven using the military refused to hand over power and we continue to pressure him to do what he must do hand over power to the righteous winners uh, ladies and gentlemen we were grateful in the beginning that the united states issued a firm statement that the elections in uganda were neither free nor fair this was a significant statement and of course we continue to call upon the Biden administration to follow those firm statements with firm action. We are also concerned, ladies and gentlemen, about the close to $1 billion support that the United States continue to give to the regime in Uganda, which clearly only prolongs the dictatorship 
the oppression, the human rights abuses, and the suffering of the people of Uganda. In December 2018, a U.S. federal court convicted a Chinese man called Patrick Ho for bribing General Museveni and his then foreign minister, Sam Kotesa, with $1 million to grant an oil deal to them. Of course, more money was promised to the duo, that is Museveni and his then foreign minister. But this is supposed to highlight to us that Museveni is without a doubt a corrupt criminal. While we clap, ladies and gentlemen, even with this clear evidence, evidence of a corrupt purported leader, the World Bank went ahead to approve $300 million as a loan to the Museveni regime. And as usual, there were reports that the money loaned to Uganda by the World Bank could not be properly accounted for. But still, you all saw that in June 2021, the IMF approved $1 billion loan to Uganda. Now this is supposed to be disturbing to any right-thinking citizen of the world, ladies and gentlemen. So if there are no consequences to corruption, if there are no consequences to accepting bribes and no penalties for failure to properly account for money that is loaned to Uganda, then why would we expect Museveni and his bloody regime to fight corruption? Certainly there's no expectation. I've said this many times before, and I'll say it again, ladies and gentlemen, today, that my administration commits to zero tolerance to corruption. Now, the world is calling for justice and solidarity for the people of Ukraine who are suffering and enduring, you know, a war of aggression from Russia. This is a conflict that has negatively impacted on the global economy, and we too in Uganda have not been any safe from it. We have failed it through rising in uh, prices of and the commodities. However, ladies and gentlemen, it's important for me to remind the international community that even as we support the people of Ukraine, even while we continue to call for their freedom, we must not do it in isolation of other oppressed people, in particular the people of Uganda that are grappling with the Museveni dictatorship. Now, General Museveni has been a dictator in Uganda for 36 years. 36. Ronald Reagan was still president of America. Margaret Thatcher was still prime minister of Britain in 1986 when General Museveni took power in Uganda. I was only four years. But 36 years later, when I am 40, when Museveni has led our country for longer than all former presidents combined, he wants power now more than ever. That is supposed to shake everybody. This is supposed to shake us to waking. So, since the rigged elections, in 2021, you have seen Museveni launching a campaign of torture, a campaign of kidnap, a campaign of murdering Ugandans. We are glad that the U.S. Treasury Department sanctioned General Abel Kandiho, who was in charge of these abductions and human rights violations. But when that happened, General Museveni only redeployed Kandiho to the, as a senior leader in the rank and file of the police. What is that supposed to communicate to us? That General Museveni actually rewards crime. It is therefore no surprise, ladies and gentlemen, that human rights violations in Uganda continue unabated because that is, you know, the modus operandi. That is the policy of Uganda. Torture is the order of the day. You know, recently, we were all woken up to grave, grave, grave torture marks on one of Uganda's most renowned 
authors kakwenza rukira basaija looking at the scars on his back reminded me of the pictures that we used to see pictures on the backs of the blacks who were enslaved in america marks of the whip of the so called slave master now that is where uganda is today and you all remember that kakwenza spoke out that muhozi kainerugaba who is genome seven's son supervised and actually participated in this torture now this is not news this is a reality that the people of uganda are dealing with right now ladies and gentlemen that is where we are as a country so my question is how can western countries support a regime like the one in uganda while promoting justice and freedom in ukraine how can that happen the struggle for justice must be one standard not double or triple standards it must be one standard oppression anywhere is a threat to to, to to freedom everywhere we were taught that many times ago by the great dr king so we must see all humans at the same standard we must treat all human rights as a human rights if at all we are all humans friends i know that in the past the us has been you know forced to treat genome 7 with baby gloves because he has been deploying in somalia and threatening to withdraw what he calls his army from somalia and because the united states has been having in my view a fear of terrorists taking over that region maybe that's why genome 7 has been tolerated but who tells america that the deployment and the fight against terror only lives with Museveni and goes with Museveni. We've said it many times that Uganda will continue working with African Union sister countries to ensure that there is peace and stability, not only in Somalia, but in every part of Africa, because we are our brothers and sisters keepers. So for long, Museveni has used this to blackmail the United States and indeed all other development partners, which must stop, ladies and gentlemen, and must stop now. <laughs> Stability away from home must not come at the cost of human rights at home. And I hope this message goes direct to those friends of Uganda but are not acting like friends of Ugandans. Now, let me focus on you in the diaspora. Ladies and gentlemen, you have helped save my life in the past. Yes, I say that proudly and confidently that you saved my life when the regime in Uganda arrested and tortured me in Arua. You quickly sent messages all over the world. Protests were carried out and somehow the regime was exposed and ashamed. That is how my life was saved. But unfortunately, my friend and driver, Yasin Kauma, was killed in the same time. So, I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that what you're doing is no mean feat. I owe my life and my existence, my standing here before you to the energy that you comrades put in. So please do not take it for granted, ladies and gentlemen. So why are we here? Why are we conferencing? Last year in September, we had the first ever opposition retreat in Boston, United States. And today we are gathered here in Europe. And I want to appreciate the Amsterdam chapter for the leadership. 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for making this possible. On behalf of the people of Uganda, we appreciate the efforts and the energy, the vibe, the momentum that you guys are keeping. And of course, the continued support. We do not take it for granted, ladies and gentlemen. We can only pledge not to give up. We can only pledge not to let you down. And personally, I can only pledge to avail myself for any activity whenever I am called upon, comrades. Kunga Boston Kunga. Kunga Diaspora Kunga. Kunga Uganda Kunga. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to mention this. Ugandans in the diaspora contribute a lot to the national economy back home. You contribute through your annual remittances to the tune of almost 1.4 billion US dollars. That is over 3% of our GDP. That is your contribution. So don't undermine your 10, 20, 100 plus dollars that you send back home. Because without that money, ladies and gentlemen, your families in Uganda would not survive. No, they wouldn't. Especially during this crisis. You work hard, you support your families here, and you work even harder to support your relatives and friends back home. That, we salute you, ladies and gentlemen. You comrades in the diaspora, we do not only appreciate you, we value you as a big, big, big base of our national development. Now, while you support home, you should feel like you have a home. While you support home, you should feel like it is not only going to be like this, it will get better home. Because no Ugandan should live anywhere in the world where she or does not want. No, we should live in any part of the world by choice. You must not be running away from home because of politics. No. You should be able to have friends and take them home. You should be able to get wives and husbands from these countries and bring them home. Susan, you should be able to bring Nico home. However, it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We continue to fight, and I'm confident that at the end of the day, we will be confident and free to go back to a country that we are proud to call home. Also, in my interactions with various comrades in vari from various diaspora chapters, I've noticed that they are very... Um, you know, important concerns. I've noticed them, and I've had time to interact with some of you. And I want to pledge to you, comrades, that those concerns are being... Now, let me come back to the theme of today's meet, re-energizing the struggle, reinvigorating the struggle, adding gas to the fire, re-energizing the struggle. I've been watching online before I walked in and I was well represented by so many submissions. I just want to add a few thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. These are the areas that I think can reignite, reinvigorate, re-strengthen our struggle, especially on the side of you, the comrades in the diaspora. And number one is the fact that we are working to streamline our leadership in the diaspora. However, we are moving slowly and carefully. Why? Because we know that the dictatorship has invested so much to infiltrate us. We must be careful by, with every step that we take, ladies and gentlemen. We know that you're bearing with us lawlessness, but we'd rather be, you know, Careful, done sorry. 
Number two, ladies and gentlemen, unity, unity, unity. Unity is key. I was talking to some comrades last night and I reminded them of one scripture in the Bible. When the children of Israel were freed from Egypt, days on the plane I doubt it can take an hour even in the car it cannot take a day but it took them 40 years however while they were moved Moses faced challenges challenges to the extent that some of the children of Israel actually blamed him they said, Moses, why that we are not very comfortable? Here we are free, but we cannot eat. It went to a time that Moses almost regretted why he led the children of Israel out of slavery. That for me energized me made me believe that the challenges that we are facing you know have been faced before we are here to celebrate that at least even though general Museveni seven rigged our election even though he is keeping many of our comrades in jail even though many of our friends are dead and buried at we are Gentlemen, I used to come to the gathering of drinking beer. It was a gathering of just dancing, having fun, and going back home and making money. But see that we are meeting here, spending your ad and money, traveling from various nations to meet here just to discuss the future of our country. I look at that as an achievement. So while we are still facing challenges, while we are still frustrated that we have not achieved what we are supposed to achieve, I want to encourage all of you, ladies and gentlemen, let's quarrel let us, as we walk forward. Do not stop to quarrel. Do not stop to blame your friend. Blame him or her as you walk forward. That is the best way to do this. Because we are going to fight. We are going to blame each other. We are going to face challenges. But let us face them as we age closer to the goal. So ladies and gentlemen, unity, unity, unity is critical in the diaspora. We are looking for ways to continue forging unity while carefully, of course, observing people who might be working to derail or to scatter us. Because they are also there. We are encouraging the diaspora to continue exposing the atrocities that are ongoing in Uganda. Please take advantage of the freedom of speech and freedom of expression that exists here. It does not exist home. Back then, we were told stories of people that were missing water. But again, in our local language, we have a saying that when you find plenty of water, you drink and even take a bath. So here, where there's plenty of freedom of speech and freedom of expression, please grab that opportunity with both hands and legs and run away with it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to remind you that General Museveni and his fellow bandits back home feel the pinch don't undermine the effect of the protests that you do when you hear them calling you traitors when you call, hear them calling you uh, all kinds of names then you know that they are feeling the effect you know that you're touching them where it hurts most so do not stop ladies and gentlemen you are not traitors it is museveni and his bandits that are the real traitors to democracy in uganda 
So let's do what we must do and let's do it with all our might, ladies and gentlemen. Number four, I want to encourage you to continue to expose and denounce members of the regime who come overseas to these countries to enjoy the benefits and services that they are denying people back home. You know, kindly do not stop. Ugandans in the diaspora should continue to expose and frustrate them. Do not accept them here. You notice them, go after them. Another thought is that we need more such protests like the ones that we are happy that, that you carried out yesterday at the ICC and the, uh, the EU Commission. That was powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Continue such protests that highlight the atrocities. They are effective here. They are watched. They are listened to. Do not stop, ladies and gentlemen. Do not stop. We should continue. I also want to remind you, I'm sure many of you know, that we have filed quite a number of affidavits to the ICC. You are aware that we took General Seveni, his murderer's son, and all his fellow criminals to the International Criminal Court. So, as we push from the protest line, we're also pushing from the legal line. You are aware that the European Union Parliament voted overwhelmingly condemning the conduct of the rigged election in Uganda. They voted against the violence, and yes, they voted overwhelmingly to the tune of 90% in favor of targeted Magnitsky sanctions to regime officials. So while we protest, we should know that we are pushing a log that is already weakened. Let us push and push some more, ladies and gentlemen. Let's push the EU to follow through to make sure all these resolutions come to effect because they have, you know, passed the statements, they voted against the oppression. It's a question of pushing for effective action. And I believe that will be achieved. I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that such sanctions were put against people like Gaddafi. Such sanctions were put against people like Omar el-Bashir. Such sanctions were put against people like Taylor of Liberia. But it took years to the extent that these dictators reached a time and they were bragging, telling those freedom fighters that sanctions won't do nothing to them. You all know how it ends for dictators. It ends in tears. So let's keep going and go hard on them. I want to encourage you to continue your petition campaigns to relevant authorities demanding to an end to Western funding and military support for the regime in Uganda. Some organizations, as you know, have stopped funding and even the IMF has now started um, asking or demanding for accountability from the regime. But all this has been and continues to be the work of you comrades in the diaspora. We thank you very, very much. You are fighting. The regime in Uganda always hires multi-million dollar lobbyists to spin narratives and of course to, to promote their lies, to sugarcoat the crimes and the atrocities back home. You know these organizations and these companies. Some of these lobbyists have been pressured to drop relation with the regime. Let's keep going. Many of them are known. Expose them. Let's do this together because that is very, very effective. Of course, we are further exploring ways how to deal with the legal activities and contracts that some of these individuals and companies have with criminal regime personalities back in Uganda. You find them, expose them. When we expose them, we don't stop there. We push the authorities to do what must be done. Finally, I want to invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to be vigilant in identifying and uh, exposing corrupt government officials. These people steal money from home. They come, they invest that money in developed countries. This is a, an old dictator's playbook. 
That is what Mobutu did. Mobutu would steal money from Zael, now the Congo, invest it in Belgium and all these other countries. That is what all these other dictators have done, including Yoweri Museveni. Now, look out for their businesses. Look out for their properties. Look out for their relatives. Look out for even their dogs. Let us look out for them. That is the best way of fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, by doing that, you are much more effective than a person that gets a missile and shoots at them. These people only know how to use violence. Let us defeat violence. Because you comrades in the diaspora, you are privileged to be in that position. Use it. Let us use it and use it as much as we can. Friends, I want to conclude by reminding all of you comrades in the diaspora that it is because of your tremendous and dedicated contributions that we were able to smoothly sail through the 2021 presidential campaign. We did not lack fuel. We did not lack posters. All that was courtesy of the generous donations of friends in the diaspora. We never ever take that for granted, ladies and gentlemen. It was because of you that we actually won the 2021 election. Although it was stolen, but we know we won. Of course, no one expected General Museveni to peacefully hand over power to us. But at least all of you know that by now we have exposed him, we have stripped him naked. General Museveni used to be a smart dictator that comes to you know, these developed nations in a suit. I want to ask, when did you last see Museveni go to Europe? When did you last see Museveni go to America? He cannot travel there because even the countries that are dealing with them are dealing with them very shyly. They know they are dealing with a criminal. They know by doing that they are being partners in crime. And we confidently call them out and tell them you are dealing with a criminal. We know that at least there's a certain degree of morality in well-governed countries. So let's push them to disassociate themselves with a criminal called Yoweri Kaguta Museven. <laughs> However, while we do that, do we then I'll just allow him to sit in a chair that is not supposed to be sitting in? Do we just give up? We certainly don't give up. We have to keep pushing, pushing, and pushing. I want to finally remind all of you, ladies and gentlemen, that while I'm standing here as your president, Museveni did not steal Bobby Wine's victory. Museveni stole your victory. Me, I was only representative of you as presidential candidate, just like anybody else can be. So the question should not be how Bobby Wine gets this victory or how Bobby Wine kicks Museveni the hell away. It should be how do we do it? The most important question should be every one of us should be asking themselves individually, have I done enough? Have I done all that I can do? Have I exhausted all my tricks? If your answer is no, my brother, my sister, I request that you leave this place even more determined and more energized because it is two-way. Back in Uganda, we are either free or we are enslaved. But we cannot be enslaved by Museveni and his family. No, we cannot. We cannot and we shall not. However, we are going to have to say that in action not just in word, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> finally, and very finally, I want to end by bringing greetings from Uganda. Ugandans are resolved. 
because what else can they do anyway? Ugandans are determined because what else can they do anyway? However, I want you to know, you comrades in the diaspora, that we rely so much on you. We rely so much on you. Ugandans have been killed many times. They continue to be killed. And they've resolved to go down with a fight, a moral fight. But I want to remind you, friends, in the diaspora, it is historical. History has told us that in the fight against all these dictatorships, particularly in Africa, the biggest role has been played in the diaspora. It is the diaspora that caused the fall of many other dictators. And Museveni knows the effect, the power of the diaspora. He knows that he had to send the Rugundas of the day, the Amama and Babas of the day, to come and lobby. You all know, ladies and gentlemen, that much as General Museveni is using violence, Museveni's biggest resource, what is keeping Museveni in power, are these Western governments. If they disassociate themselves with Museveni, he will be no more. If they don't cover up for him, he will be no more. If they open their eye and assert action against his gross human rights violations, he will be no more. But they are not going to wake up and do that. You are going to push them to do that. And I know that you're able to push them. Push from this side as we push from that side. I'll also inform you this, ladies and gentlemen, that many Ugandans have reached out to us. Actually, some of them are actually contemplating violence. We tell them, just like I'm going to tell you, that for us we are non-violence. I'm leading a team that is non-violent. But I'm afraid that a time might come and I cannot stop the violent ones. <laughs> However, as for us, we are non-violent. But with the way things are going, Ugandans might reach a time when they want to break free by any means necessary. Therefore, while we play an, our non-violent and moral part, while we play our political part, let everybody play their part. And you, comrades in the diaspora, I want you to know that you have a very, very important part. I thank you that you've been playing that part. I thank you that you continue to play that part. Please do not stop. Push as we push. Ultimately, victory will be ours. I can guarantee you that in our lifetime, we will all meet in Uganda on a function similar to this. Not fearing any drones, not fearing any security operatives. We will be in our country and we will invite these white people to our country and we will tell them, you see, we told you that we'll be free and we are free. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, our friends, uh, for being part of us. Thank you very much. Thank you for all this that you've done for God and my country. People power, our power, please have your seats. Give the president another applause. We are humbled by the inspiration and the words. Uh, we are left with, please, you can have your seats. Uh, we are left with uh, one other item, Mr. President, that is going to be appreciation of, uh, appreciation of our comrades who tirelessly have been here for all the three days.